And then they mysteriously cut out 21 minutes of the movie. And we now know what those missing 21 minutes were, by the way. And this is a guy who'd already done Eyes Wide Shut back in 1999, and then right before the film comes out, uh, you know, Stanley Kubrick ends up dead. Because they know, everybody in Hollywood knows about this. And this is a guy who'd already done Eyes Wide Shut back in 1999, and then right before the film comes out, uh, you know, Stanley Kubrick ends up dead. Right. And he dies the same way that one of the guys died in the film, and the film, of course, exposes the cabal totally. And then they mysteriously cut out 21 minutes of the movie. And we now know what those missing 21 minutes were, by the way. The missing twi- so if you watch Eyes Wide Shut right now, it's a very strange thing because there's this really absurdly prolonged section at the beginning where Tom Cruise's wife, Nicole, played by Nicole Kidman, who actually was his wife, that's another weird thing about the movie, she is dancing with some kind of really wealthy French guy for like a long time, and he keeps hitting on her and hitting on her and hitting on her. It turns out that the deleted 21 minutes ends up that she becomes part of the ceremonies as well, not just Tom. And that the guy she was dancing with was the leader of the cult. And that's why they spent so much time talking with this guy. And and then the guy just disappears. It's like, well, why would you set off that character if it's not going anywhere? Right. Because it was going somewhere. But it was so incriminating that the cabal changed it and then... When the, guy, when the guy in red says, remove your clothes, that's actually a different voice. They dubbed in a different guy's voice. The original voice would have been the same voice of the guy that was dancing with Nicole Kidman. They took all that stuff out, and if you actually get the DVD and you watch Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman being interviewed for this thing, they are really freaking out about when they're asked questions about uh, Stanley Kubrick's death. Because they know, everybody in Hollywood knows about this. You know, I shared three years of my life with this man, and uh... it must have been an unbelievable thing to have heard that he died so soon after the film had been finished. What was that to your immediate reaction? My immediate reaction was one of absolute shock. Uh, And disbelief. And even when I went to the funeral, going to the funeral, I, you know, I was not in a good way, and I was very concerned about Nick and very concerned about Christian and his family. And, uh, and concerned uh, about the movie, you know, because I know what it meant to him and what it meant to me, uh, and, and and my wife, my co-star, my love, and. Uh, I, I still even went to the funeral thinking, you know, somewhere it was, uh, you know, I mean, it was, it was ridiculous because somewhere still inside I thought, and Nick and I were talking, that it's not true. Somewhere deep inside I wanted to believe this is not true, that I'm going to go and I will show up at the house and he will be there. It's, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it was illogical and it wasn't something that I actually, but somewhere there was a part of me that went there and not until we went into the room where we'd have dinner with Christian and we drank, you know, when Nick and I were first there in the fireplace and there was Stanley and Christian, you know, and uh, 
And there was the coffin, and it just, you know, it just was absolutely absurd. I gotta tell you, it's, uh, when he passed away and that happened, I, you know, I, uh, that was really a very tough time for us. Very tough time, I mean, for the family, for Nick and, and myself, for, and, and, you know, concerned about protecting that film uh, as much as we could. Mm -hmm. He'd wanted to make it for a long time. Yeah, he did. He wanted to make it, I think, since uh, uh, mid '60s, yeah, late '60s. Just the tragedy of that. dying. What? Within weeks before its release, or within weeks before its release, he finished the picture, and we saw the film. And I was actually, I was leaving from New York. I was on, I was in Australia. I just flown to start uh, pre-production on uh, MI2, and I got the call in the middle of the night, and uh, from Nick and from Leon, and. Uh, It's, un it's just unbelievable. Yeah. He gave me the time. What was your... I just, I, I'm sorry mm, to sorry. interrupt you because we're under a great mm. time pressure and I, I'd love to talk to you mm. for half an hour. It'd be fascinating. Mm. What was your immediate reaction when you heard that he died? Um, shock and I didn't believe it. And I didn't want to believe it because it just seemed wrong. Didn't seem like the right time. He seemed to have too many other things to do and say. And it's still very, um, sorry. Oh. I'll, I'll move from that just for a second. You spent, you deliberately spent a lot of, I'm sorry to bring that no, up. No, it's all right. Um, <laughs> you, de you spent a lot of time with him deliberately. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. Um, do you want a hanky? It's fine. <laughs> uh, and you learned a lot. And I have the feeling that he became a sort of a father figure for you, professionally speaking, and probably in a sense personally as well. What did you learn from him? What could you pass on to us? What? Gall should have the right be able to see the new Kubrick film exactly as he wanted us to see it. It's just a shame that the movie couldn't be released the way Kubrick wanted it released. Jack Valenti is the man who forced Kubrick to change his film. Valenti is the president of the Motion Picture Association of America, the organization which decides how a movie should be rated. The rating system was not designed to please movie critics or producers or directors. It was designed to give advanced cautionary warnings to parents. Amy Berg's documentary, An Open Secret, I finally got to watch it only because it was leaked on YouTube, and I've never been able to even find a legitimate copy of it. And it talks about these sex trafficking scandals in Hollywood, which of course include the fact that unless you are, you know, a celebrity who's, who goes way back, or if you have celebrity parents or something like that, or if you have a lot of money, unless you're in one of those three categories, most people end up basically having to prostitute themselves in order to get a career. It's a very sad fact. The question is that, you know, I, I feel about the, the films is, is it, is it truthful? Is it interesting? You know, to worry about uh, the sort of mandatory scenes or touches which people often think make a picture more, I keep thinking of the word ingratiating with the audience, seems to me, uh, you know, not something that you really have to do. I think the audience has more, uh, is more intelligent and reacts more to the truth than some of the people that try to outguess them think they will. I mean, they will also like, uh, I mean, they, they will also like things that are essentially not true and unfun, but I mean, I don't think it prevents them from responding to things that aren't true and, and are interesting and dramatic. Uh, I mean, the world is not, as it's presented in the Frank Capra movies, uh, as good as they are, and as much in them that, uh, that, that <coughs> may be like life is sometimes, uh, very rarely, I must say. But, uh, you know, th films like that, which people also like and which are beautifully made, uh, I wouldn't describe as a true picture of life. Uh, any level. Do you distrust the sentimentality of the 
Well, because sentimentality, I think, essentially means something that's slightly, that is not really true. I, mean, I, don't, I don't discount sentiment or emotion, but, you know, the question is, is, it, is it, are you just giving them something to make them a little happier, or are you putting something in which is inherently true to the, to the material? You know, are people behaving like we all really basically think people would behave, or are they behaving perhaps the way we would like them to behave? Shelley, I'm telling you, it's too many times. Every time he speaks emphatically, you're jumping, and it looks funny. So he says, I'll put on my suit and suit. No, I think that no, line lays, is right. Right. When he lays down. No, I think that line's in the right place. Okay. Because, okay, Shelley, so you say, what's the matter with you first? Because what's the matter with you means, why are you so angry? What is the matter with you? It doesn't mean what are you talking about. <laughs> Go check it out. <laughs> Go check it out. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> 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 Very good, Jack. Excellent. Right, check the gate, Doug. <laughs>